dear students uh, welcome to experimental techniques and material characterizations uh, lecture number 17 i am dr pervez ahmed uh, from this lecture uh, we will start discussions on uh, x ray diffractions uh, this is part first of this uh, lecture series uh, so uh, in this lectures uh, we will deal with the introductions of the uh, xrd or basically we can say that this is an overview of the xrd technique so let's start uh, today's lectures uh, with the introductions of the XRD. So what is an XRD technique and uh, what for it's and being used in material characterization. Uh, so be remember uh, X-ray diffractions uh, is used to obtain uh, structural informations uh, about uh, the crystalline uh, solid. I mean it is a technique, it is a sort of the characterization techniques uh, that is used to obtain uh, structural informations about uh, the crystalline uh, solid. What it mean? It mean that we can only characterize uh, those sample uh, in the XRD uh, which is uh, crystalline. I mean, a, a sample is non-crystalline, so we cannot uh, characterize that uh, with the XRD to get uh, the information about uh, uh, about the phase composition or uh, its structure information. So uh, this kind of the technique uh, is useful in biochemistry uh, to solve uh, the 3D structures of the complex uh, biomolecules. And along with that, this technique is a bridge, uh, I mean, it's bridge the gap between physics, uh, chemistry, and uh, biology. So uh, X-ray diffraction is important for uh, solid state physics, uh, biophysics, uh, medical physics, and chemistry and biochemistry because in all uh, these fields of physics and chemistry uh, uh, we need uh, to characterize the solid for structure and formations uh, in order to utilize that for a particular uh, application. So this is why we are saying that this is of special importance uh, in those uh, field of physics and uh, chemistry. So uh, before going into full detail of the XRD that how XRD uh, techniques work uh, under which principle it works uh, and how we get the information from uh, the XRD. So let's have a uh, bit of details about uh, the X-ray diffractions. So uh, whenever uh, we come towards uh, the X-ray diffractions or XRD technique, so the history basically start from 1895 uh, from uh, the discovery of the um, from the discovery of the X-rays by uh, Röntgen, and for that he was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, for his uh, brilliant discovery. And then from that, uh, when we talk about uh, the X-ray diffractions, so the major development after 1895 occurred uh, at, uh, at 1914, uh, where we have first diffraction pattern of the crystals uh, that has been made by uh, Neffing and Wan Lu. And uh, for them, uh, uh, for that discovery, they were also awarded the Nobel Prize. And then we have uh, another major discovery, uh, another major development uh, regarding the X-ray diffraction that is in uh, 1915. And that was the theory to determine the crystal structures from the diffraction patterns uh, that has been developed by uh, the break. And again, the Nobel Prize was being awarded for this discovery. Uh, then in 1953, DNA structures uh, solved by uh, Watson and uh, Craig, and again, uh, both of them, they're being awarded the Nobel Prize for uh, their discovery. And now, what we have uh, with the, uh, with the uh, development and the science and technology, uh, now we have the diffraction patterns has been improved by computer technology and here we utilize a uh, method to determine the atomic structures uh, and uh, uh, many applications so that including uh, medical, medical application and particular. So now uh, let's come toward the questions uh, that how diffractions uh, work. So uh, basically uh, when we have x-ray uh, so the X-ray they interact with a single uh, particle. Uh, so as a result of that, the incidence beam uh, scatters uniformly uh, in all direction. I mean, first we waves, X-ray waves is interacting with a single particles, a single particle uh, between uh, materials from 
uh, a crystalline uh, uh, solid or crystalline uh, materials. So uh, the X-ray, they while interacting uh, with the particles of that materials, so uh, the beams scatter uniformly in all directions. Uh, also, if we have uh, by a single particle, we mean if we have a solid. So uh, when waves, uh, by waves we mean X-ray. So X-ray waves while interacting with the solid, uh, so the interacting beam scatters. Uh, and uh, it's interfere uh, constructively in some directions of uh, producing diffracted, uh, diffracted beam. So along with that we have some uh, range of, uh, random arrangement uh, causes beam to randomly interfere and no uh, destructive patronage uh, produced. So crystalline materials, uh, what is mean by crystalline uh, material? Crystalline materials are regular patterns. Uh, I mean, regular pattern of crystalline materials uh, produces regular diffraction pattern, uh, uh, patterns. I mean, uh, just like we mentioned in the first slide, uh, that we can only characterize uh, crystalline uh, material uh, in the XRD technique or the uh, XRD. And the reason for them uh, is that uh, because uh, uh, the crystalline atoms, uh, they produce regular uh, diffraction uh, patterns as uh, which is being used as a fingerprint uh, for their recognition uh, and diffraction patterns uh, just like i mentioned diffraction patterns give information on uh, crystal structures i mean we uh, uh, characterize uh, crystallines uh, atom or crystallines uh, materials uh, with the xrd techniques so it gives uh, i mean uh, we get the diffraction patterns of those particular material crystalline material and their diffraction patterns it gave information on the uh, crystal structure so here you can see an example uh, so this is an example of a crystalline material uh, that are being uh, so here you can see it's a crystalline uh, materials that are being characterized by the orderly periodic arrangement of the atom so here you can see that uh, it's a different plane of the uh, same uh, material so here you can see this one is a 200 uh, zero, zero plane of the atom and sodium chloride and this one uh, here you can see uh, the, the two to zero planes of atom and sodium uh, chloride. So uh, the unit cell uh, which you people have studied and uh, your solid, st uh, solid state physics or solid state chemistry. Uh, so you define different terminologies uh, uh, with uh, concerning the atom or with the unit cell. So what is mean by unit cell? So the unit cell is the basic uh, repeating unit uh, that uh, define uh, a crystal. I mean, it is the smallest uh, unit uh, inside a crystal uh, that define uh, the whole crystal or in other words, we can say that it is the building block. It is the basic building block of a crystalline uh, material. So the unit cell, uh, we call that a basic uh, building block of a crystalline uh, materials. Uh, so here, uh, uh, parallel planes of the atom, which you can see here, uh, these parallel plane of the atom, uh, which intersecting the unit cell, I mean, here you can see that these plane, uh, they intersect uh, the unit cell, uh, are used to define the directions and distances and the uh, crystal. I mean, these plane, these intersecting plane, which you can see it here. Uh, they, they, uh, what what are their purpose? What are they used for? So uh, these inter intersecting plane, they determine the directions and distances and the crystal. And these crystallographic planes are identified by the Miller indices, and you know about the Miller indices from your knowledge of solid state uh, physics. So these crystallographic planes, they are being identified by uh, the Miller indices. So the atom in the crystals are periodic array of the coherent scatterers and thus can uh, diffract light. So diffractions occur uh, when each object in a periodic array uh, scatters radiations uh, coherently uh, producing uh, concerted constructive interference uh, at specific uh, angles. So the electrons and an atom coherently uh, scatter light. Uh, and the reason for uh, this is that the electrons interact with the oscillating electric field of the light uh, waves. 
So atom in the crystals uh, form uh, a periodic array of the coherent uh, scatters. Uh, so uh, the wavelength of the X-rays are similar to the distance between uh, the atoms. So diffractions from the uh, from the different plane of the atom produces uh, a diffraction patterns, uh, which contain information about the atomic arrangement uh, within the uh, crystals. So X-ray are uh, reflected uh, scatters uh, and currently observed, refracted, and transmitted when they interact uh, with the matter. I mean, these are the possible interactions of the uh, X-rays when they interact uh, with the atom. So uh, we are being interested with the one which is being uh, diffracted and diffracting occur according to a specific rule, uh, which we will discuss in the uh, coming slide. So X-ray powder diffractions, uh, which in short we call XRPD, uh, uses information uh, about uh, the positions and tensity, uh, width and shape of the diffraction uh, peak, which you can see it here uh, in a pattern from a polycrystalline and sample. So here you can see the diffraction patterns of titanium dioxide. So titanium dioxide, you, uh, you know that it consists of different phases. So the two theta positions, uh, just like we mentioned, uh, I mean, is uh, contain the information about uh, the positions and density within shape of the diffraction peak. Uh, so here you can see that in this uh, diffraction pattern, we have three phases of titanium dioxide. So uh, the green one uh, is uh, an athese, uh, that is uh, uh, a particular phase of the titanium dioxide. Uh, then we have brocai. And brookite is being, uh, I mean, here is in the uh, blue color. And uh, rutile is another phase of titanium dioxide uh, that is being in a uh, red color. So uh, the X exists here, and this uh, pattern in XRD patterns uh, that's been in uh, 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 2 theta uh, is basically corresponds to the angular positions of the detectors. I mean this, uh, I mean this two theta value, you can see it here, it's basically the angular displacement. Angular displacement of war, uh, or the angular position of war, is the angular position of the detectors uh, that rotate around uh, the sample. And uh, this is the intensity, I mean this is the intensity of uh, the X-ray beam uh, which is being uh, diffracted. So this two theta, it just basically corresponds to the angular position or the angular displacement of the detectors uh, that rotate uh, around uh, the sample. So how uh, the diffraction occurs? So the diffraction occurs uh, following the Bragg's law, and a sample is modeled to understand uh, that what conditions are required for uh, the diffraction. So here is the Bragg's law, and here is the situation. So here you can see that these are the different planes. And these are the X-rays, uh, the incoming X-rays, or you can say the incident X-rays. They are coming uh, strike uh, your incident uh, plane, and after incidents, uh, they are they are being diffracted in different uh, directions. So here you see the law, the Bragg's law is lambda is equal to two d uh, sine theta. Or la uh, lambda corresponds to uh, I mean, this is the wavelength of the X-rays. A particular type of X-rays being used. And this is the spacing between the uh, the plane and theta is the uh, the incidence or the diffracted uh, angle. So for parallel plane of the atom uh, with this with the space d between the, the plane, constructive interference only occur when the break lies uh, uh, satisfied. So it's the uh, conditions for uh, the constructive interference. When the constructive inter interference occur only. Uh, when the Bragg law is uh, uh, satisfied. So, uh, in majority of the diaphragmometer, uh, just like the one we have, uh, the X-ray uh, wavelength lambda is uh, fixed. I mean, it has a particular value, uh, which in later on, uh, we will talk about that in the coming lecture. Uh, so, consequently, a family of plans producing a diaphragm peak only at a specific angle, uh, theta. So uh, additionally, the planes uh, normal must be parallel to the diffraction's uh, vector, which you can see here. I mean, uh, we're talking about uh, this plane. So additionally, uh, uh, and along with that, the plane normal uh, 
again if you're talking about this uh, the directions are perpendicular to the planes of the uh, atoms uh, diffraction vectors uh, diffraction vector is the vector that bisect uh, the angle uh, between the incidence and the diffracted uh, beam so i mean uh, we have plane normal diffraction vector so in somehow the same uh, concept so here you can see that uh, plane normal mean uh, the directions uh, between uh, the direction perpendicular uh, to the planes of the uh, what to the planes of the atom so here you can see that and again the diffraction vectors the vector that bisect the angle between the incidence and the diffracted uh, beam so it's somehow the same uh, concept so the space between the diffract uh, diffracting planes of the atoms uh, determines uh, the peak uh, position i mean uh, sometimes the people ask the questions uh, that what actually determines uh, the peak uh, position so be remember uh, uh, peak position is basically determined by the space uh, between the diffracting planes of the uh, atoms. So these, uh, the space between uh, these planes, they basically determine uh, the peak positions. And along with that, uh, the peak intensity is determined by uh, what atoms are in the uh, diffraction plane so two things uh, peak positions and peak intensity that is a uh, very important in the XRD technique so the space between the diffraction uh, or diffracting planes of the atom determine the peak positions and the peak intensity uh, is determined by what atom are in the diffraction or diffracting plane so here you can see the arrangement uh, of the specimens uh, x-ray tube and uh, detector and this is our powder uh, diffractometer uh, they typically use a uh, Bragg uh, Brentano geometry so here you can see the situations I mean uh, here you can see that this is the x-ray tube uh, this is the specimens and this is the uh, detector so here you can see uh, the incident angle uh, that we are denoted by uh, omega is defined between the x resource this is the x resource and the sample so this is the sample this is the x resource and we have the angle uh, between the x ray they strike from the x ray source on the uh, on the sample so the lambda uh, sorry the omega is basically denoted uh, the incident angle between the x-ray source and uh, the sample and uh, then we uh, we have this tooth ruta angle that is called the diffraction angle so it is defined uh, uh, it is defined as the angle between the incident beam and the detector's angle so this is very important and people always ask about this that why we are using two theta uh, instead of uh, theta so be remember we are using two theta because uh, here you can see the situation the exact situation so uh, by this two, uh, two theta we mean that uh, it's the diffracted angle uh, this, this two, two theta is the diffracted angle and it is defined uh, between uh, the incident beam this is the incident beam uh, which has the actual path like this uh, and the detector angle so this is the detector angle so this is the this two theta is the basically the angular displacement uh, between the incident beams and the uh, detectors so the incident angle uh, just by looking at here uh, the situation you can see it by yourself so the incidence uh, angle omega is always equal to half of the detector angle uh, which we denoted by uh, 2 theta so the incident angles omega is always equal to half of the uh, detector angle uh, 2 theta and uh, now we have two uh, type of the uh, x-ray 
uh, uh, diaphragmatics. The first one we call uh, t, uh, theta to uh, two theta ratio instrument. I mean in uh, uh, theta two theta instrument. Uh, example of which is Ricago RU uh, 300. The tube is specs, uh, but in this kind of apparatus, the sample rotates at uh, theta theta degree per minutes, and the detector rotate at two theta degree per uh, minutes. I mean, uh, Ricago uh, RU 300 is uh, apparatus uh, that is called two theta to uh, that is called theta to two theta instrument. Uh, which means that uh, the samples uh, in this kind of apparatus, uh, the X-ray tube is fixed. I mean, here this tube is fixed, while the samples is rotate at uh, a, a theta degree per minutes, and along with that, the detectors, I mean, it rotate at a two theta degree per uh, minute. So we also have the apparatus that is that is known as a theta ratio theta instrument. An example of that sort of the apparatus is a uh, pen analytical expert pro. So, uh, in this kind of the apparatus, uh, the sample is fixed and the tube uh, and the tube uh, rotate at uh, a rate of minus theta degree per minute and the detector rotates uh, at a rate of uh, theta degree per uh, minute. So, these are the two different kind of the apparatus we have. The first one is theta to theta. Uh, in which the X-ray tube uh, is fixed and we rotate the sample here uh, and then to uh, get the diffraction pattern we have to move the detectors with okay, the angular displacement that is equal to uh, 2 theta and then we have uh, another type of apparatus uh, uh, instrument that is called theta theta uh, instrument uh, an example of which is a pen analytical uh, expert pro uh, and this uh, means uh, we have uh, the, uh, the fax sample uh, and uh, we have the x-ray tube that rotate in uh, one direction uh, with the uh, with the speed uh, our angular speed that is equal to uh, theta degree per minutes and uh, the detectors uh, it rotates in other directions I mean one clockwise the other one is anti-clockwise uh, so uh, it, it's rotating speed is degree theta degree per uh, minutes. So that's all we have for uh, this introductory lecture. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lecture very soon. Uh, that will be lecture number 18. In that lecture, we will talk about uh, peaks and planes and the XRD pattern. Uh, so stay tuned for the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.